This is Classic FM. Well, I'm very pleased to welcome Yulia Lezhneva to Classic FM today, and we're going to talk about her debut album and her background and one or two other things. Yulia, welcome to Classic FM. Thanks for joining me. Um, can I begin by asking you a little bit about your background? Do you come from a musical family? No, I come from a family of geophysicists. And, um, well, my parents wanted me to continue the line, being a physicist and learn mathematics, but uh, I've never showed any sign of <laughs> talent in that. So my mom, I'm very pleased, she re realized really soon that I, at five, I had a talent and I, she realized I have to be a musician. And you began playing the piano and singing, yes. as you say, as a five-year-old, which yes. was incredible. So it was obvious from that point on that there was no other career path for you. Well, I was too little to understand that, but um, I think my mom, she really did a great job. She watched me and she, I think, saw that I was, I was myself in it. I really enjoyed doing that and I thank her. You've had a great deal of success in competitions, I know, and any number of competitions. Um, how important is that, do you think, for an aspiring musician and artist these days? Um, I think it, it can be great, but at the same time, um, it's not so good if you do too many competitions. Um, I, th I think it's very important to choose them really carefully. From, from my side, I'm really happy. I did quite a few and all of them um, helped me to go step higher, mm -hmm. step forward with repertoire and also I was really young and um, mostly every every year or every two years I've done a competition and my experience is great in competitions and actually um, video from my second competition was I posted on YouTube and this video Mark Minkowski saw and he called me and invited for an audition and so that's how we met and that's exactly. how my first appearance in Europe was made. He listened to me and he invited me immediately to perform second soprano role in um, Bach C minor ba mass, B minor mass. That must have been so exciting oh, to yes. get that call. Yes, yeah. a lot. I was still a student. I mean, do you have to ad adopt a different strategy for competitions? Is there a little bit of po politics involved, or you just just decide you're going to sing Vivaldi, for example, and go out there and do it to the best of your ability? Mm, I think you have to choose really carefully what you sing and um, really be careful about the difficulty of the repertoire that you take. So everything that you do is showing you best, the best way and also is easy for you because many competitions can be quite long and you have to sustain. If you are young you have to be able to get through this process, three tours or four tours and sometimes they um, require a, quite a big program. But I think it's, it's great. So it, for me it was great because uh, I didn't do so, much, so many concerts when I was a student and for me to perform a competition was, was a great step because I was preparing the program, I was thinking about it, I was growing as a musician and that was kind of my recitals when I performed on competition. So you trained initially at home in Russia, but when you came to the UK, you spent some time in Cardiff, I know, and also in London. Yes, I spent two years in Cardiff and one in London. Tell us a little bit about, uh, for example, your experience in Cardiff, because that's a place with a great reputation. For oh singing. yes, that was a wonderful place. And I, I wish I could recommend this place to anybody who, who want to um, study, who wants to discover more if they if somebody's already finished their studies and want to um, explore more things and to meet more people and more coaches and um, because we often had uh, very great uh, musicians coming to, to, have, to give master classes and also of course Dennis O'Neill uh, the tenor is I think one of the best teachers in, in the world of um, vocalists and it's just a must if you like singing if you want to sing to meet this person. Do you think it necessarily follows that if you're a good singer yourself that you're going to be a good teacher or are they two different? Oh, that's difficult but I think it's always a matter of how you feel in it. Uh, if you feel you want to do it and uh, you feel respond 
if you try it, for example, that's how I see it. If I try with with somebody who wants to sing, and if I see that this person is really interested and watches me with great interest and uh, comes for a, for a lesson, you know, with a great um, excitement, mm-hmm. this is the sign, I think. Now we've already touched on one big break for you with Mark Minkowski. Um, how did this? exclusive contract with Decca come about because that really is the holy grail isn't it <laughs> yes it actually came uh, from also from Cardiff thanks to Cardiff uh, because as I told you we um, nearly every month I think we had um, somebody very famous coming and give master classes so the same happened with me uh, when Kiri Takanova came she came two times and on the second year of my studies uh, she um, kind of she told me she really liked what I was doing and I grown up and I became really better um, uh, as she could compare me with the first year and um, well I think she liked me so much that she invited me to perform at the classical Brits ceremony where she was receiving um, a lifetime achievement prize and well uh, I just agreed and I sang the best aria I could perform that was aria of um, Elena, the final rondo from La Donna del Lago, Rossini, and that's um, how I think everybody heard me mm. on that night. It really is a fairy tale story, isn't it? Really <laughs> incredible. So you have this recording contract with Decca and Giovanni Antonini and Il Giardino Armonico. How did you come to choose the repertoire for the disc? Because it's very, very um, virtuosic music. Vivaldi, Handel, Mozart, motets, very taxing. <laughs> yes. Uh, honestly, to record a CD with Il Giardino and Giovanni was always a dream for me. We met first in 2010 and since then I got really in love with the spirit of the ensemble and we got friends with Giovanni and of course choosing the repertoire for the CD we, we were doing together and we, we met each other two times before we decided we were um, uh, searching, discussing things and I brought my ideas and he had several ideas. Of course, we. Uh, we thought it's a must to put a Vivaldi piece in, on the album. And, um, well, the th- interesting thing was to find uh, something to link, a composer to link Vivaldi, Handel and Mozart. And so, um, uh, when I searched for it, I, I realized that in the 18th century in Italy, in Italy, there was um, the motet, it gained the highest uh, popularity in the middle of the century and Porpora was one of the composers who wrote a lot, like 70 motets he wrote, but mm. unfortunately just a few of them survived and yes. we were very lucky to get His one from yeah. actually from the British Library. Yeah, and it was already edited and uh, I think this piece have nev- never been performed. Mm. So There's a lot of work has to be done, isn't there? You know, if you want to make a coherent artistic project, it's not just a question of doing the same thing that everybody's done before and doing it better. It's a question of coming up with a, a coherent theme, if you like. Yeah, but I think in, in Baroque repertoire is somehow it's easier to get something new, to get, and it's easier to, um, I mean, to this, how you say, to, um, to be able to open up as yourself, I mean, to put yourself in it, because this music is, it's, it's still very new and, um, the, the main point to perform Baroque music is just to be uh, as free as possible and imaginative and improvisive. And I think that makes it easy and at the same time it's a difficulty, but um, I, I'm just so happy I have a chance to perform Baroque music. And also the motets, they're very, it's a very special uh, solo motets that uh, you can describe it like a concert for voice. So you imagine in 18th century it was extremely popular genre and um, it was created actually for the singers who were not allowed to sing opera, who were, for example, this motet of Porpora was written for Graziola, for a soprano of Ospedaletto in Venice. And she was a nun and of course she was not allowed to do a career, but she had such a beautiful voice that even uh, there are some records of uh, letters that have survived saying that, you know, uh, I've heard this singer and uh, she, she touched uh, our hearts so deeply. And, you know, our stars like Bordoni and Guzzoni, they are 
not so good actually oh, because she's she's such a singer. So the devotion to the church robbed the rest of us. Yes, of and voice. nobody even could see their faces. Julia, it's lovely to meet you and thank you very much for coming in to Classic FM and talking to me today. Thank you thank very you. much. It was a great pleasure.